What I am about to show you is running in real time. I built it over a few days because I wanted to generate some planets. But if I presented these two images to you, you might think that they have no common ground. While the truth is, is that they share the same technology that the medical industry has used for decades. The Marching Cubes algorithm was invented by William Lawrenson and Harvey Klein at General Electric. In their 1987 paper, the two describe a way of turning any set of 3D data into a visual representation. They designed this algorithm to help doctors see inside of the body, not with 2D scans or images, but with a 3D model. But how did they do this, and why did General Electric, one of the biggest innovators, not use it to its fullest potential? This is how the healthcare industry accidentally created some of the best video games of all time. To tell this story fully, we're going to go back to 1968 and follow Will Lawrenson. He graduated from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. He wanted to get a doctorate in math and then teach, but that's when... The Vietnam War meant that the U.S. had started the draft, and our hero got an exceedingly low lottery number. The way that draft numbers work is by birthday. To put that into context, Lawrenson was almost guaranteed to be drafted, but he had a plan. Draft deferment. If he could get a job, then he could avoid going to war. He had a few options. General Electric and IBM were two of them, but the one that he went with may sound surprising. He went to work for the Army as a scientific programmer for computer graphics. He used various pieces of equipment provided by the Army and also by himself. Eventually, he purchased the Lundy Vector Refresh System. One of the first programs he wrote for it was a contouring program through a 2D scalar field. That may sound like a jumble of words, but this is actually the first iteration of what will become Marching Cubes. Some people use this today and have nicknamed it Marching Squares. After the war, Lawrenson landed a job at General Electric's Corporate Research and Development. Our next stop is 1984, where we meet our next character, Carl Crawford. Crawford worked in GE's Medical Systems Business Group and was an expert in computed tomography. For the layman, that's how CT scans are displayed. CTs and MRIs are important medical practice because they can show doctors and patients what's inside of the body. Part of his job was developing applications for General Electric's new product, the Graphicon. The Graphicon was a rendering engine for flight simulators. It was a high-performance application that could do things that other companies just couldn't do at the time. Crawford gave a talk on that system, in which both Will Lawrenson and Harvey Klein attended. Klein worked in the Electronic Materials Lab, working on a way to reconstruct 3D surfaces from electronic materials on a microscopic level. Both Lawrenson and Klein were looking to get a foot into GE's medical group. As they learned about the Graphicon, Crawford explained how it displayed scans of the body using an algorithm called Cuberals that was licensed from the University of Pennsylvania. And as luck would have it, Crawford issued a challenge. He challenged the room to think about how they could replace Cuberals with polygon-based technology. Both Lawrenson and Klein retreated to an office and started to brainstorm. They started thinking about how they could replace cubrils at its core, and then it dawned on them. Klein was analyzing how to solve the Rubik's Cube with symmetry. At the time, the Rubik's Cube was still a new invention, and it was still relatively unsolved. And because of that, it held some interest to a lot of people. And then they both had a genius idea. What if they took the two-day method of connecting data that many programs used at the time and took it up a dimension, using symmetry to reduce the complexity? It would take time, but they started to work on every individual case, all the way up to 256. They found that doing it manually was too hard, so Lawrenson took the symmetry idea and reduced it down to 14 main cases that could be flipped, rotated, and moved around to make a full list of 256. Lawrenson then had the basic algorithm running the next day, taking in ASCII files and outputting models. It was working. While the computer they were using at the time could only render 8,192 triangles, they were able to use a CT dataset of a spine, and it worked. 
This sent waves through the medical and biological realm. Generating geometric surfaces was so important that this paper had sparked a revolution in computing graphics, including simplification of models and rendering volumes. After this major success, there was a new task, making it usable. A team that Lawrenson was on was tasked with making 3D models of skulls so that way doctors could individually treat patients. Previously, doctors would use a standard model of a skull, but if marching cubes could be used, they can make a model per patient to better the treatment. The reason marching cubes cannot be already used is because it had too many triangles and the compute time was just too high. There were also topology problems like holes in the models. The fix included removing extra vertices from the model and making new decimation algorithms to reduce the triangle count. In the end, marching cubes was not only usable, it was revolutionary. This story does not explain why the patent for marching cubes was just allowed to expire. And to this day, we don't really fully know why. If they kept the patent instead of letting it expire in 2005, they could have made millions and millions and millions of dollars by leasing it out to other people to use. Lawrenson hosted a party to celebrate it because there really wasn't any other reason. But the effect of that decision can be felt around the world now. From official NVIDIA textbooks to video games and simulations, all thanks to these 14 cubes, symmetry, and the need to visualize the human body. But where do we go from here? This is a 30-year-old algorithm, and it changed healthcare forever. But now that it's in the public domain, we can do whatever we want with it. And even better, some developers have already beaten us to the punch. This project came up because I wanted to explore how to make some planets, and I really do think that doing all this research made it a little bit more enjoyable than some of my other things that I've done. But there's a lot of things you can do with this. The program, if you write it from scratch, is very slow, but you can add things like parallel processing and multi-threading on the GPU or the CPU, and it's a great learning experience. So I highly suggest that you go check it out and try and figure it out yourself in whatever programming language that you're using. This little research project was a nice break from doing my big stuff. And if you want to see any of the resources, they're down in the description. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. We've got some bigger stuff coming out soon. But if you want to go check out my reverse engineered Skylanders or how I built my own VR headset, that'd be cool too. All of the code, like in almost any of my videos, is on my GitHub. And I actually have a new Discord. So if you want to go join that, you get to see some sneak peeks and maybe yell at me for all the things that I've done wrong. Here's some more planets and some stuff I made while making this video, and I hope you enjoyed.